Hey everyone, my name is Rish, and I'm a 19-year-old entrepreneur. My life mantra is, screw it, let's do it. My goal today is to inspire you to follow your dreams and say, screw it, let's do it. My story starts from humble beginnings in India. My parents were born in a small village where economical and job opportunities were limited. My father dreamed big. He wanted to go against all odds to become an engineer. He became a chemical engineer and founded India's first phosphate-free detergent. My parents went through many struggles and saw opportunities not as obstacles. Oh, sorry. They saw problems not as obstacles, but as opportunities to create impact. At that time, they had an older son. And on February 11th, 1997, they were expecting a baby girl. And they were super excited. They got dresses and dolls, but guess what? I was born. So they had all these dresses, they had all these dolls, and they didn't know what to do with it. So when I was a baby, I used to wear a dress and play with dolls, so that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> my parents wanted my brother and I to have the best education, so we moved to Singapore. And being raised in Singapore, we didn't have a lot of toys, so my brother and I thought of being creative. So we took apart broken electronic items and built our own toys. The one thing that I loved doing was going from ideas, so planning on how to build these toys, to a final product, and that excited me. And I realized that I wanted to become an inventor. Things changed at the age of seven when we moved to Canada. Coming to Canada, I didn't fit in with, with the peers in my school. I was, I was that weird kid, I was that misfit. I didn't have a lot of friends, but the one thing that I still loved to do was to come up with ideas. I used to be that kid that sat in the corner at lunch and sketched on a piece of paper and came up with the most ridiculous ideas ever. And the thing was, I had all these ideas, but I never believed in myself. I thought, I told myself, Rish, I can't do this. I don't have the experience. I'm not good enough. I don't, I don't have a degree. I don't know anything about business, so I'm unable to do these to build these ideas. Things changed when I went into high school and I heard about a program called Junior Achievement. Junior Achievement was a program for high school students that gave them the opportunity to build businesses in a safe and mentored environment. So 20 of us came together and built a company called Irimia. It was a silly product, so what we built was a stress relief kit for, for corporate offices. So at that time, I was 15 years old, and there was all these super motivated and ambitious kids that came along together. The one thing that I found interesting was not the product. I didn't care about stress relief kits, but what really excited me was that there's one thing that we all had in common. We were super ambitious, and we were energetic, and we all believed in the same vision to achieve and build a company. Like I said, it was a silly product, but we did 733% in return on investment, on sales, and won Company of the Year award. And after that, I realized, wow, with the right amount of passion and drive, anything can be achieved. And I was super excited. I, had, I knew nothing about business, I knew nothing about technology, and I knew that day that I wanted to start a tech startup. Like I said, being a socially awkward, Weird kid, I hated interacting with people. And I loved food, so going to restaurants, I didn't like talking to waiters and, and servers. I wish that there was an interface that I could order my food and just leave. And like I said, I didn't know anything about software, I didn't know how to build products, so I realized, let's fake it till we make it. So I got a PowerPoint presentation and made a mock-up with, with PowerPoints and make it so that if you click on a button, it would, it would seem like it's interactive, but in reality, it was just a bunch of pictures. I found my first customer. I went to Earl's, and I tried pitching the manager, and I said, hey, this is going to be huge. You're going to love it. All your customers are going to freaking love this product. It's going to be huge, and they kicked me out in five minutes. They thought, you know, I was 15 years old, didn't know what I was talking about, and that day, it was my first sales meeting, and I was bummed out. I thought, wow. I can't do this. I knew it. I was right from the beginning. But I didn't give up. I thought, you know what? I can learn how to code. I mean, I don't need to read books. I don't need to go onto the internet. So I thought, 
why not try reaching out to a professor? So I went onto the University of Calgary website, and I scraped a bunch of email addresses, and I spammed all the professors saying, hey, my name is Rish, I'm working on this, and I want your help. And none of them got back to me except for one person, Dr. Leela Bajet. She said, hey, Rish, love what you're working on. Um, let's meet up next week. And I thought, holy crap, a freaking professor wants to meet with me. I thought that was huge. I was like, whoa, that is crazy. And I met with her, and she said, cool project, but do you want to come join me and my grad students? I was like, join? Like, I mean, I'm still in high school. And she said, we're working on this educational technology to, to inspire kids to learn more about engineering and sciences. And I thought, ooh, fancy word, sounds interesting. So um, she mentored me and showed me how to build product and how to go from that vision and that idea and how to know what people want and how to craft that and bringing psychology and technology together. And that blew me away, but that wasn't enough. I wanted to do more. I wanted to build a startup. So I decided, hey, let's, let's, I want to get my foot into the startup community. So I went to the startup meetup. I didn't know what meetups were. I was 16 years old, and I was super awkward. So I went to this meetup. Everyone there was probably 30-ish, and I was just standing in the corner, being awkward as usual. And this guy comes up to me, and he says, hey, you look like a smart kid. Um, my name's Jamie. Do you want to meet me at that coffee shop across the street? And I said, sure. And we didn't talk at all. We sat down. He took out his watch, and he said, if you can tell me what brand and model this watch is, I'll give you 50 bucks. And I thought, wait, are you serious? Like, that's so easy. So I took out my phone. I searched up the watch, and I couldn't find it. And he took out his phone. In less than two seconds, he took a picture. And guess what? On his phone, it showed what brand it was, where you could buy it, and how much it was. And I was blown away. I was like, wait, you totally faked that. And he said, no, I'm working on this image recognition algorithm. And I was like, ooh, big words again. I have no idea what the heck that is, but sounds, sounds fancy. And he said, do you want to start this company with me? And I was like, screw it. Let's do this. And we co-founded a company called Usearch. So it was an image recognition app. So you could take a picture of any object, and it would tell you what it was, where you could buy it. So think Shazam, but for life. But there's still something that I didn't know. I didn't know how to build a startup. I, I knew how to tweak around with products, but I wanted to learn business. I want to know how to go from zero to one. So I decided to pull out my help card. And I went on to LinkedIn, and I turned on stalker mode. So I scraped as many emails as I could and tried to look for CEOs and founders. And I spammed all of them. And I said, hey, my name is Rish. I'm 16 years old, and I'm working on this. Please help me. None of them got back to me except for one guy. Patrick Lore, the founder of iStock Photo. He gave me 15 minutes of his time, sat down with me, and gave me a mini boot, boot camp. And he, showed, he told me about how to go from idea to, to knowing whether your product fits into the market and how to scale up, how to get investors. Basically, it was a punch full of, full of information and realized, wow, this guy took me seriously? I have no idea what the heck I've, I was doing. And, and since then, I realized to be more vulnerable and, and to ask for help. A few months later, we got an email from Google saying, hey, you've been accepted into the Google Startup Launchpad. And we were like, wait, what is this? And so it was a pro Google Launchpad program is a program for um, app-based startups. So they provide us with one-on-one -on -one feedback from product managers and engineers from Google and provided us with technologies. I learned a lot about product, but I was still lacking something. I want to know how to build a startup. I want to know how to do the business stuff, because that's what interested me. And then I graduated from high school. So we were supposed to bring a prop. And all my peers brought hockey sticks and their pets and their best friends. And I didn't really have anything interesting. So I thought, maybe I should just bring a hunk load of cash. And, and don't get too impressed. That's rupees. So that's like $2. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a five-year plan. I call it the golden plan. So my plan was I would go to UBC, do engineering, and then go to Stanford and do an M MBA and then start a company because, you know, I need a degree to, to do what I want to do. And then it all changed in first year. I met this really cute girl, and I wanted to impress her by taking her to a fancy restaurant. But being a student, I was broke. And finding a part-time job or the school year was such a huge commitment. I wished, what if there was an app that I could just pull out and find short-term work in my area? And I thought, you know what? That's such a simple idea. I'm pretty sure someone has already made that. And the first thing I did was, I called up my friend Kirill from, from JA, and I told him, hey, Kirill, check out this thing. Um, 
there's, no one has actually made this. And he was a bit skeptical, and he thought, no, no, the, 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 this is way too simple, and this is way too practical. We then found out that there was nothing out there. So the first step that we took was we made a website, we made a bunch of mock-ups, and we made a sign-up list. And in a few days, we got over 250 sign-ups, and we thought, no, no, we just got lucky. That, that was just coincidence that you know, people probably just accidentally clicked on some stuff, and you know, that happened. So we heard about the next big thing. At that time, we only had an idea, and we were a bunch of two scrappy kids that knew nothing on how to build a company or how to code. And we heard about the next big thing, and it was the last day. That's Carol on, on the left. Um, it was the last day of the application, we, and we thought, no, we're too early. Let's just wait a year. Let's first you know, build this thing, and then once we get customers, once we get money, then, then, then we'll think about joining this program. But we thought, you know what? Screw it. Let's try it out and see, and see what happens. So the next big thing is, a, is an accelerator for young entrepreneurs. So they help us with mentorship and introducing us with business leaders um, and guiding us from, become, from being entrepreneurs that we were, because we had no idea what we were doing, to entrepreneurs and, and putting us on the right track. And that's when we started Tasky. Tasky is a two-sided marketplace for staff on demand. So you create a profile. You put your skills, you put your experiences, and the app matches you with short-term shifts in your area. So let's say if there's a Taylor Swift concert tomorrow, and they needed extra staff. I mean, who, does, who doesn't love Taylor Swift? I love, love Taylor Swift. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just we thought you know, there has to be some app where we could build something that gives millennials a flexible job opportunities and being able to make quick cash. My biggest takeaway from this talk is to say yes. Take every opportunity that knocks on your door. Even if you don't know, just do it, because you can always ask for help. There's always people out there that are five or 10 steps ahead of you, and they will always be willing to help you. And the other thing is find your tribe. Find people smarter than you. Find people that align with your vision, that align with your values. Whether it's a business idea, or playing an instrument, or learning a language, or even traveling, or doing anything, just just say, screw it, let's do it. If a, if a nerdy and socially awkward kid like me can do it, so can you. So I challenge you to say, screw it, let's do it, and get started on your dream today. Thank you.